and welcome. I am so excited to be here with you. Thank you. It's been a while since I did any streaming and I've got a really exciting um, chat today with my friend and uh, an artist who I greatly admire, not just for her art, but also for her, um, her interest in the world, in other artists, in techniques and like me Helen shares um, shares an interest in streaming and demonstrating so the ideal person to have a chat like this with so without further ado I shall introduce you to Helen she is here she is Helen um, oh she's that way um, artist <laughs> and teacher hi Helen <laughs> how are you doing hello Gail I'm really well, thank you. And this Good. is such an exciting project that we've set up here. We're talking on Zoom and broadcasting on um, on all sorts of platforms. So, um, yeah, that's fabulous. Well, we're going to Excellent. be um, going through some slides. We've each prepared some slides on um, some of Cezanne's work that stood out to us from his recent exhibition. And uh, we're going to be talking about practical um, ideas and techniques that we have managed to take away from the exhibition. So we've each found it. Really, we were just talking about how useful we found it. Uh, and um, Helen came up with a great idea to share that here. So it's really nice to have a record of it. So welcome if you're watching live and also if you're watching on uh, recording. If you're watching live, you're, you're able to, you should be able to engage with us in the comments. So if you want to say hi, let us know if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch. And if you want to ask any questions, we'll do our best to respond. Um, so we're going to go through some slides. We'll each do about 10 minutes of talking. We're going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, and um, yeah, just th that's kind of it, really. So um, I'm going to switch over now so you can see the reference photos that we're going to be talking to. So we've got some already prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if people want to put something in the chat, I will show you how it will show up. So if I just type in... Uh, hello and welcome. Then um, you'll see that it's going to come up in that space in the middle between us and the um, the slides. So the space there for anyone who wants to make any observations or questions. While we wait for uh, people to drink their tea and um, get typing, Helen, would you like to um, talk? This is uh, this. Um, Absolutely. Guys, this looks like Cezanne off uh, on a plan air trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, I think, Gail, the, the reason I was inspired to do this conversation with you, and I think we've mentioned this many times, is that um, we are both on a very, very similar wavelength. I think we've both got this very, very inquiring practice that we follow. We're both keen to know more, and we want to analyse opportunities like that exhibition. Um, to see what we could glean from it. I know you went with yesterday, didn't you? Yes, to, I did. Um, yes. 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 Yeah. We had a fantastic uh, time. Yeah. And did you? Yeah. Did and you I, go I went with Paula Kemp. Yep. Hi, Paula, if you're watching, and hi, yesterday. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had a fantastic day out there. Yeah, it was really good. But um, one of the things you said, I think you went first to the exhibition, and you said you felt that. Um, you could have hung any of the paintings on your wall at home. And I thought that was just a great statement because that was the impact of it, really. When you walked in, it felt kind of domestic um, somehow. You know, the paintings are all of a domestic scale. Uh, they're beautifully lit, so they were alive on the walls, I felt. You know, and it just blew my socks off. And I knew you'd had a similar response. So I thought we'd have a lot to say about it, really. Um, so, uh, yeah, backtracking, I think... Both of us have come at this from slightly different angles. Obviously, you know, your work has a focus on the figure and the portrait, um, whereas mine is more perhaps landscape and still life. So we, we've both got different, um, we bring different things to Cezanne's work. Um, so for me, and it's a brilliant place to start, uh, Cezanne doing his <clears throat> walk out to go plan air painting, and that fabulous photo, I love it. He's got his pochard box on his back, um, those, those are probably, I think those are probably the legs of the box strapped oh, on his Oh, I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so, you know, the guy's ready to go, you know, probably climbing mountains all over. Yeah, I expect we can both <laughs> identify with that lovely feeling of setting off full of expectation of what you're going to produce, the miracles you're going to work oh, on canvas. <laughs> totally, totally, yeah, yeah. And you have this wonderful landscape to work in as well. So, yeah, I completely relate to that. You know, it's um, it's fantastic to see. And he did, he did watercolour sketches outside. He did take full-size canvases out side two to work on um how much he did outside and how much he did in the studio seems unclear uh, and i think it's probably a bit hard for anyone to know you know whether he retouched his paintings when he got back into the studio um but certainly i felt that the paintings that i saw at the exhibition had an energy to them there was a real um you know that kind of immediacy that you yes. get when you paint in the landscape and i think there's nothing quite like that really and it really came through in his work um, and that really chimed with me because it's something I'm trying to learn really all the time to have that honest response to my subject. I mean, whether it's flowers or whether it's the landscape. Yes. But certainly going out there, all weathers, you know, put a hat on, keep warm, <laughs> get out there and sort of experience it um, because there is nothing like it. And he had this term, which I've, I've been um, trying to find out a little bit more about, but he used this phrase, city sensation. So when he was out in the woods or in the landscape, he was trying to record these city sensations. And my French is not great. This is a kind of mashup. Mm -hmm. But apparently uh, the word in French, sensations in French, is related to the word senti, which is to feel. Oh, yes. So the Impressionists yes. generally, yeah, the, the Impressionists, you know, refer to recording sensations, you know, to trying to describe the sensation of light mm -hmm. in the landscape or whatever, mm -hmm. the atmosphere. Uh, so, you know, it's got this direct relationship in French to feel, to feeling, you know, yes. And, yes. and any plein air painter can describe this, I think, um, that when you're out there, it's not just what it looks like. You're not just painting a picture. It's a whole immersive yes. experience. Yes. Just so good for you in every way. Yes. It's just yeah. the fresh air, the bird song, whatever. You know, it's just, um, there's nothing quite like it. I'm very I, evangelical about it. My students will tell you so. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I think that, that whole, that whole to them about it. It, it really helps with the, um, with that sense of leaving things fresh, doesn't it? I think if you're, if you're, yeah. if you've only got a limited amount of light, um, I mean, I know he had, he had a bit more light perhaps than we do with his location, but you know, when you have a limited amount, you know, in our case, it's just about to pour with rain. It, it, you can't fuss over stuff, can you? You've really got to be direct. Yeah. Yeah. So shall we, absolutely, um, absolutely. shall we look at some of the work that you've chosen? Absolutely. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm having a bit of a nightmare with my reference photos. I don't know why it's gone back to the start again. Hang on. All right. Nearly there. Yeah, nearly there. Right. right. Here we are. This is the first one. This looks like a, your um, winter practice. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, what have you got there? I'm showing your, your, your setup in the snow. Yes. So that's kind of following his, the picture of uh, Cezanne with his backpack. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show my little kit that I take out if I'm doing a small painting. I'm it's kind of zooming through. There we are, this one, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so out there in the cold uh, with the pack all kind of, I had a rucksack that I take out with me and a little pochard box that fits onto a tripod like that. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it was, you know, I think it's the best couple of hours you could possibly spend yeah. you know uh, the, the farmer happened to come along you know? <laughs> the farmer came along and left fresh tracks through the snow while I was stood there painting it was uh -huh. a bit of serendipity and it just uh -huh. gave me this wonderful foreground uh yeah and um it's just amazing you know how small an outdoor painting kit can be or even I think you've got another image there I hope of Sh um my shall sketchbook. I move on yeah yes there's yeah. your sketchbook is showing now yeah, sorry, there's a bit of a delay, Helen. It's showing. I'll, I'll yeah, just reassure sorry. you that it is yeah, showing. That's fine. That's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's what I do a lot of. So obviously, we don't all have time to go out and spend hours out there. But I find even just, these are like snapshots, my little sketchbook, mm -hmm. this, um, sort of pocket-sized sketchbook. But I go out and do, you know, 10-minute sketches. And it's yeah. like getting the equivalent of a snapshot, really. But it does give me ideas, you know, even doing that. And when I lost the sketchbook recently, 
may have heard about the yes. drama. I left it on a in the back of a taxi, but I got it back. Obviously. Hooray, hooray. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I was bereft. I thought, oh, crumbs, all that stuff, you know, mm. means nothing mm. to anybody else, which I mean is really valuable. Mm. So I was so glad that I got it back. But that's what I do. So I walk the dog and I, you know, take a little bit of watercolour with me and a pencil. And it all fits inside my coat, you know, and it's just lovely. You just see things all the time. This landscape where I walk the dog up on that hill, the light is glorious. You know, yes. you see the yeah. most amazing things, you yeah. know, and we just look at the temperature. It's not Provence, you know, it's a sort of northern bit of the Midlands, you know, and, um, and yet <laughs> every day the, the light and the weather and the sun, you know, there's inspiration all the time yes. out there. And I yeah. love just, you know, getting a little bit of that. Because just actually the action of doing it, just sitting there, just mm. looking and absorbing mm. all of that, it's actually just brilliant. It's not so much about the product, but it's the actual sitting there and absorbing all of that, which is fantastic. And it's brilliant for your mental health as well. I have to say, you know, there is nothing quite so calming. Uh, you know, it makes you feel more philosophical, perhaps, you know, gives you a little bit of distance on life and, you know, all that yes. stuff that's so good for yeah. us. So do you have a bit of Cezanne ringing in your ears or in your in your mental image when you're painting now? Does it do you think in when it, it, anything about the exhibition that uh, that you oh, yeah. that has affected your practice in this situation that you're showing? I, I know we don't have the sign. I would say. Yeah. And hello, Caroline, by the way. Thank you. for your, Caroline says she loves the chat. Oh, good, <laughs> My good. sister. <laughs> I thought we'd be good at this. Girl. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> Um, yes, I do. I, um, there was a freshness to his work, and I think it takes a real, uh, a real focus, a real determination not to fiddle and not to try and neaten your work or smarten it up so that viewers see da 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 da. You know, all that kind of weight of pressure that we have as artists to to conform to certain kind of tropes, whatever they are. Um, and I love that Cezanne was one of the earliest artists. To leave his work unfinished you know to say that's mm. it i've done enough put the frame on it you know off you go and i think that's so refreshing and i think that's probably the biggest point that i took away really yes. those paintings yes. looked as fresh as the day they were painted yes. you know uh, yes and he wasn't overly from what i understand he wasn't overly saddled with a sense of wanting to conform and what he, he was a bit of a uh crusader wasn't he i think and i i think in a sense we both have that you know whilst we appreciate all the work that's being created around us and it all does feed in doesn't oh, well, certainly speaking for myself it does all it all goes in to the melting pot yeah. but at the same time the, the need to just you know reproduce what's gone before uh, for me I don't, mm. I don't know about you but i'm that's that's less interesting although um, yeah yeah, yeah. we kind of walk yeah. a tightrope, don't we? You want to learn from our predecessors, but yes. we've got to put in a dose of ourselves as yes. well. We need to find our own authentic voice. Yes. That we so, put into that mix. Uh, so, just to say yeah. hello to Paula and Sandra, thank you so much. It's great to know that you're enjoying this. They both, uh, Sandra says, I agree, sitting and yeah. absorbing is uplifting. Yeah. Yeah, I think Sandra uh, N is my probably my student. I think oh, yeah, nice, Sandra nice. from Birmingham. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, can, shall I move on to the next <laughs> slide, Helen? Yes, shall do. Yes, on? sorry. So this is your landscape with tracks. It's your. It's got your. Uh, yes. your yeah. Yes. So, so and I, that... it relates to there's a there's a, there's a Cezanne that follows as well. And um, one thing that really struck me in the exhibition, I took lots of notes when I was there was how he, um, he seems to use quite a high horizon line uh, in a lot of his paintings. And I did that quite deliberately when I was painting the tracks. I wanted to see the effects of doing that. So not a great enormous sky. You know, the sky is in the top, you know, I don't know, fifth of the painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, what does that do? How does that change the painting? And I think he was, it, to my mind, and I'm no expert here, but... In my mind, I think he was constantly seeking to kind of flatten the surface. I don't think he was about, in, you know, painting great depth in the way that perhaps um, Turner might have done or something. You know, that it's kind of evoking massive space. I think he was bringing the landscape to us. And I think he does this with his tree paintings too, that, and his still life. You know, he takes yes. you right in there. Things are yes. often cropped off the, the frame. 
and you feel like you know you're really immersed in that thing particularly mm. when you're stood in front of a large canvas like that mm. that he takes you right in and that's that's more of that sensation thing yeah um, and I th- yeah. I think you know obviously this is kind of part of a process this painting but I think there's um that's worth exploring I that's something I'm exploring you know and that yeah. painting prep part of that yes I, l- I love how um to to your point he that by making that horizon high, he gives you more of the ground, doesn't he? The ground that you yeah. would be standing on, and and his uh, his painting of the forest is it the forest floor that as well? It's you've got a sense yeah. of what you would be standing on if you were there. I really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's, I think a good painting does that. I, I love yeah. that that um, painting of yours, that self portrait that you did. That it kind of plonked us in your studio, looking <laughs> at you. You know that great <laughs> sleeping foreground. <laughs> that you put in you know yes yeah, you know we yeah. were there you know and mm-hmm. that was so dramatic you know and you do feel you know you get that sense of being in there you know fabulous yeah, yeah. um do you want to click on yes sure yes one? so the next oh, one is a landscape um showing lots of houses and a, a comment thank you sue is watching on facebook uh she says helen you're describing mindfulness Lovely. great for one's mental health that's so true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So the next image is uh, you've got his view. Is it the um, over? Over? Oh, over? Uh, this is the one. Yeah. This is the one with the high um, horizon yes. line in it. Yes. Uh, and and again, he's looking at the shapes in the houses. There's no one focal point here. You know, he's throwing the rule book out when it comes to composition and he's looking at the shapes of the roofs there's no particular mm-hmm. kind of center or, or focus to this uh it's kind of shape and design on uh, canvas isn't it it's, it's a fascinating painting i think i spent a long time looking at that one yes. looking at what he was doing he does use a bit of atmospheric perspective in it those colors are getting bluer and yeah but not goes into not painting, exaggerated so. is it he's got those nice acid greens no. in the foreground but yeah i think uh, um I'll be talking about composition a little bit later. And I think to, yes. similarly to your observations about this, I, well, I don't know if this is what you meant, but I feel like he he didn't spend a lot of time premeditating you know, his composition. And sometimes he's got some really yeah. interesting crops, which I like. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't mm. look as though he's been following, you know, lots of rules. Um, not that, you know, not that they're, uh, but it works. <laughs> Like cropping yes. those houses. Yes. You kind off. of have to know the rules to break, yeah. break them in a way, don't <laughs> yes. you? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. yeah, do you want to press on? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, yep. So um, this is. The, first, there we go. Yeah, sorry, it's a bit slow um, moving on into what the screen. Up? But this is the uh, forest floor looking yes. up through the beautiful yes. angular lines of the trees and if you want me to zoom in to show the brushwork I certainly can Helen just let me know oh that would be good yeah yeah, okay. yeah. going in so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for my hmm. here we are lovely yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so you can see this all overness that he's creating and that's yeah. definitely a takeaway for me that there's no particular focal point the canvas is full of trees and foliage mm-hmm. and ground and you know, there's, he's not doing, you know, if you think of people like, um, uh, thinking of Claude Lorraine or someone like that, a kind of classical painting where everything is yep. beautifully balanced and all of that and leads you in, you know, yeah, chuck that out. You know, we've got shape, there's negative spaces he's painting. Yeah. Uh, the brushwork is so lively and he sweeps, in a way, that kind of unifies it. It's not a mishmash here. The, the sweeping brushwork helps to keep it all together, I think. It's, mm. Uh, it's a really clever painting, I think. Yes, yeah. yes, Beautiful. I agree. I agree. Right, I will shrink that back down so people can enjoy the full yeah, yeah, impact yeah. before moving on. <laughs> right. OK, okay. shall I move to the next slide, Helen? Do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. So these are your this is your magnolia in situ. Absolutely stunning. This painting. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, well, that's it. I mean, that kind of says it all, really. You know, I, I wanted to paint outside. The weather was iffy. Uh, the weather forecast was worse. You know, the, the forecast was bad. Uh, but I was determined to get out because you never know, A, they could be wrong, and B, it could be worse tomorrow. So I well, I love your optimism. Today. I think that's a vital ingredient in the painting <laughs> process. 
optimism. Absolutely, get out there and have a go because it could work. And this is one of the nicest outdoor paintings I think I've ever done. Yes, uh, it's absolutely I loved stunning. It. I, thank you very yeah. much. Thank yeah. you. And I just, yeah, happiness on a plate, really. So, yeah. <laughs> so, do you mean you love it? You, and it you love the, You love the memory of the process or you love the, the way it right. captured what you saw? It's all those things, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, a painting is more than the sum of its parts. I was painting and painting and painting, and I stepped back, you know, across the other side of the lawn, and I had a look at it, and I, there was a real kind of, oh, you know, and there was like that kind of moment with it. Oh, okay, that worked, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so lovely, I thought, I don't need to do that much then. You know, and it's all very mm -hmm. free and easy. There's not a great deal of fiddling mm -hmm. about with it. But I and can the really... underpainting that was wiped off as well. Sorry. Yeah, as I was saying, I wiped out the previous painting, so there was some colour left underneath it, and I think that helped. So there weren't gaps. You know, sometimes yeah. an a painting will look more unfinished if you've got white gaps in it, but there weren't there because of the, the help from the under yes. painting, you know, the white yes. gaps. Position. Sorry, go on, go ahead. I was just going to say that you, um, you've really um, applied what you were saying about um, Cezanne's um, tree to his forest painting in that you've got the negative spaces there in the sky you've got the um you know you're showing some of the ground you've got that sense of rhythm as well which is you often see in nature don't you but to be able to put that in um in your painting is is wonderful yeah i think it really creates a sense of you know it's not a still it's not a still it's a like a living organism that blowing a tail tree. At the time. And the <laughs> Yeah. And it, it, it was a little and, windy at the time, so yeah. just doing this, you know. So you do what you oh, can, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, and actually, yeah. nature's a gift like that because shapes are repeated, aren't they? You know, the flowers are repeated all over. So yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Of it, isn't it? Oh, and Caroline yes, said that's certainly. a brilliant okay. phrase. It phrase. It might be bad today, but it could be worse tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I am quite philosophical. That, really. <laughs> you are. I can vouch for that. <laughs> Uh, shall I move on? Is that? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, because we haven't even started on your choices yet. No, well, th this is your beautiful painting of um, brambles and leaves. I'm sorry, I haven't written down the titles. Um, your, so your it leaf. will be Perpetual Spring. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Got uh, yeah, so, I mean, you'll just see. I just thought you could flip through these because you'll just mm -hmm. see. They kind of illustrate what we've okay. said. Okay, well, yeah. this is a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful foliage, and um, Jane says uh, Jane, Jane loves that painting. <laughs> oh, bless. thank so you, Jane. A, yeah, yeah, it's really lovely. Yeah, yeah, thank lovely you, Jane, lovely. and thanks for yeah. joining. Hi. <laughs> um, Hello, Jane. Yeah, we've got a home crowd here, Gail. Yeah, so my dog. Can you hear my dog? Sorry. He is very welcome. I knew something was coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my husband would get looking. Okay. <laughs> and this is. Right, uh, I've also away. got your forest painting as well coming up now, which uh, yeah. which is again very reminiscent of the um, of Cezanne's, but with your style. You know, it's got your freshness and your love of green. You really are green queen. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I avoided it for years as well. Isn't that funny? So funny, yeah. the things that happen anyway. But yes, yeah. yes, so you get the gist. Don't mm -hmm. you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, okay. Yes, and then we we move uh, on to his still life with the the bowl of fruit and a knife in the foreground. Really interesting. And then some. We've talked. Yeah. I was going to say we've talked a lot about my work, Gail. If you want to put your selection up. And um, and go on to the portraits well, that, and that's and lovely. Your well, point the, of view. I will be talking about a still life. So um, I so yeah. If there's any, uh, obviously interrupt if things come back and you're you're keen to interject. I shall look forward to ongoing uh, um, no rather worries. than a monologue. I'll try not to do a monologue. <laughs> so thank you, Helen. That was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Got us off to a great start. And thanks everyone. If anyone wants to ask any questions um, or chip in. Um, it's just so lovely to have you watching and thank you and uh, yeah. ditto if you're watching on a recording don't hesitate to drop us a line um, we're always delighted to hear um, other people's thoughts on that's really what this is about is sharing sharing ours and other people's Absolutely. and Helen I think we end with your wonderful still life with the lemons in the foreground look at this amazing are they cosmos those those flowers uh, they are cosmos They're yes they beautiful. are they are um, you can just see the link I mean, 
think it yeah. explains itself that one mm -hmm. and again it was painted over an old canvas so you get little glimpses of color and texture and stuff coming through which is brilliant for avoiding yes. kind of preciousness and yes this is a bit of chunking. totally yeah. totally yes i love yeah. the little anecdote that was uh in his portrait in the in um Cezanne's portrait of his son in the um uh let me just change to you and me talking he he did a, a portrait of his son and it, they showed that it had actually been cut on a, so he'd been on one canvas and he'd done something else like i think it was a still life or something on the same canvas and uh the the the, the curator's uh, labels were pointing out that you could sort of see where where Cezanne had cut the canvas and there were some traces of the other painting which they also showed so you could see how and i just love that you know yeah. those traces like you're saying like kind of the under underpainting being a previous uh ditched thing yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was getting very twitchy yeah. about people overpainting their their masterpieces, not not loving them. <laughs> uh, I do it all the time. I'm, I'm terrible, you know, always trying to kind of recycle things. But me um, too, me too. But, right, I'd better yeah. move on, Helen, because we've got ten more minutes of Zoom time. So yeah, right, ahead. okay. So um, moving on, then these are. So I wanted to talk. Um, to start by looking at composition. So this is his huge bathers painting, and I love that, like with the like with the trees, he um, he had this sense of rhythm, and he's got wonderful rhythms going to one side and up. Um, and I love the way he portrays the figures. I like, you know, there's so much I like about it that appealed to my own work about. Um, you know the nude but the nude done in a really what I consider to be a really healthy way um, and I just loved sitting yeah. in front of this massive painting so much that I got my sketchbook out shamelessly as I want to do in museums and I highly recommend that to anyone who's equally shameless um, and I, I wanted to, to, to sort of propose as a practice something I find really um, really nice which is um, just sitting there and copying whether you're you know even if you're not using the same medium so here I was just on a tiny sketchbook with a pencil but just as you can kind of think as you draw by you know writing and drawing your thoughts to help order them when you try and actually copy a composition and it's often just the composition you just learn so much and I just learn not not particular things that I could name but you know just just there was so much that was kind of accidental but oh, clearly not and you know just the way he treated the background which I tend to be drawn to the figures and don't notice the backgrounds don't notice the ones in the back you know the, the hidden figures so that was something that yeah. I really enjoyed and something I would take take to my own work and then um, I'm just going to show the um, sorry Helen well, I was going to say it's interesting to see it in black and white. The fact that you've had to convert it into black and yes. white for your sketch yes. reveals all yes. different, different aspects of it, doesn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Yeah. Yes, oh, resolving the shapes. So um, then I was going to look at, um, yes, yeah, so talking about composition as well. Here's an example. So the, he used it in, um, in a lot of his still lives and, as we said, in some of his landscapes and things. Is this crop? Thing. And I do wonder, obviously we can't ask him and I don't want to project, but I do wonder if he did kind of what I do, which is that you just need to paint. <laughs> and I just kind of yeah. like almost, I, mean, I, I realise that he's renowned for having set up his still lives carefully and, and like balance things. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I love, I will come on to that in the next slide. But but I just think his his crops, I don't know. I don't know if it was deliberate, whether it was or not. It's something that I really take away from the from his work around not necessarily doing a sanitized composition so that was uh, that one and then here was my attempt so inspired by his painting of um, the jug in a still life um, I I set up my own still life which um, which just explored some of the things that he'd done in his painting here so he's he's got his um, his base his table it's a bit of a it's a, it's a bit of an angle and um, it, it do, doesn't look as though it, he's really worried too much about perspective in terms of getting it representative of what's you know visually mm -hmm. correct if that's the right word 
but I love and I hadn't appreciated until again I tried to actually arrange a still life to mimic his with similar items and it wasn't until I did yeah. that that I thought oh my goodness he's actually got some of the fruit at the back deliberately raised and intersected by that um, jug and I thought that's so clever and just the way he yeah. played around with those shapes I loved so if I'm going yeah. to move on um, so the the next thing I wanted to talk about was his his technique and his application of paint and I just thought for yeah. a conversation point of view um, in future if anyone wants to go back and look through this this is his palette so apparently he used Sennelier colors according to Sennelier um, he did mm. use uh, titanium white apparently but um, I think if you look at his whites in his in his still lives if I go back to like that there is almost nothing no white in that you know it's it's blues and greens and yeah. other colors so I think he was quite sparing with the white but he did out of interest I was interested to use lots of earthy colors of course um, yeah. so that's just a just a little interest so I'm coming on to one of my favorite pieces in the exhibition the portrait of his wife and um, this is I'm going to zoom in on this because there was one particular thing I wanted to talk about um, in his technique and I'm just going to move this up so that it's in front of both of us so we're both going to disappear I think this will float in front of us both yeah. I want to go right in um, and just talk for a minute about how he treated this edge and I think if you can see the edge along the side of his uh, of the sleeve and looking right up in the exhibition at the painting I was fascinated by how he used, uh, I think he must have used a, um, excuse me, moving this around in a rather uh, mm. clumsy way, but I think he must have used a, a palette knife and he appeared to have defined a ridge along the side of, particularly I noticed the arm, where the arm meets the background, um, the green and blue joint, yeah. but he, he seems to have def really stuck to his boundaries. So he kind of worked out these boundaries and then slathered on flat paint right up to the edge of the boundary um yeah which yeah. was just a you know a technique which i thought i'm gonna try that um and i love the yeah, direct um, composition it's yeah. yeah it's an interesting shape he creates isn't yes. it her relationship with the chair yeah uh, it's fascinating isn't it yes. he's also very keen on that edge wasn't he of yes. uh, defining it in that way yes i think it brings so. her forward yeah. i think mm -hmm. yeah and um, so uh, if I, I was move... just a on that one. <laughs> so this was a painting I did of my friend Debs the other day, and um, this is showing. I kind of just was playing with composition and playing with. So I've sat Debs on a on a chair and was trying to be really conscious of the the boundaries. But it was a quick painting, therefore I haven't done. Um, you know, I haven't tried that that labour that he put in doing the flatness of the paint with a with a palette knife. But I would love to try. That. Have you ever used a palette knife, Helen? Do you, I yeah. usually see you with brushes. Do you use palette knives? Yeah, I, I've tried occasionally, you know, when you're trying to do a very fine line, I've tried doing that with a palette knife mm -hmm. and I cannot get on with it. My students often ask me to show them how to use it. And I find it's like trying to paint with your hands tied. So yeah. it doesn't suit my, my style. I love using brushwork, you know, yeah. and that's, that's my instrument, mm. really. Mm. Um, but I know people do amazing things with it. Mm. You have mm -hmm. people put a lot of paint, and if not, you know, put a medium in it or something to kind of give it some heft. You know. Yes. But yeah, yes. how about you? Uh, no, I I don't tend not to, but I would like to try it more. I think whenever if I've got too much, if I've mixed up some paint and I don't want to waste it, I'll sometimes wipe it on the canvas in the area where that's going. And I often think, oh, that's quite yeah. an interesting mark, but I've never really gone down that uh, rabbit hole. But I will. So um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Don't write anything off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so, a good one. Yeah. This is uh, so. This is just the other end of the scale. This is his lovely loose. Uh, whether it's finished or not, I don't know. But uh, just a nice loose, mm -hmm. um, a loose approach. And then this was a more yeah. polished approach to the still life. And if I zoom in a bit, there was something that really attracted me. Um, and I was trying to work out what was so distinctive about his style. And as well, I think it was those heavy shadows for me that the heavy shadows kind of under the fruit bordering on outlining 
and I, I don't know if this was yeah. you know a, a precursor to uh, you know to techniques that he was going to bring you know bring forward and uh, you know cubism or yeah, I, don't, I don't know what where it, or whether this was just what he saw but um it was radical in his time it was yeah. radical what he was doing yeah it was yeah. Matisse did you know taking off from these ideas you know you had Matisse coming along didn't you and Mm -hmm. Van Gogh as well, mm. you know, and they were sort of heavily, in, heavily into outlining. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. And um, oh, so here's the last one. The last one is just a painting of a photo of uh, my action shot with the brush, uh, just painting the still life, you know, that, that I had a go. So uh, the final message yeah. is please be tempted to have a go. And it's just such fun uh, trying, you know, whether you're sketching in a museum or, or, uh, getting your trying to arrange a, a, a still life or uh, going out and painting your magnolia like Helen. <laughs> <laughs> have you got that finished painting, Gail, to show us? Or is it uh, I haven't. Work in progress? No, I have to say it, uh, it, was, okay. it wasn't exactly a corker. <laughs> okay. Oh, right. Okay. Right. All right. I'm started a new. Gail, it's been brilliant. Your, your technical skills, your technical skills are wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I would not have a clue. It's quite extraordinary. Thank you so much. You, oh. You've brought a daft idea to life and done it wonderfully. Well, thank you. You bring everything <laughs> to life, Helen. I love it. It's so great. Oh, bless it's your so heart. great to, uh, to bounce ideas around. I just find it a tonic for the soul. And also, I always want something to be practically useful. And you tick both boxes. <laughs> excellent thank excellent you. that's good that was good fun thank you yeah, so really much good. yeah that's well it. thank you for riding the wave and i hope that we can do another one so if anyone has got um ideas of other things you might like us to talk about please do contact us both on our social media um or send us messages most of you know most both of us <laughs> um yeah. so it just yeah. remains to say thank you and goodbye lovely bye bye everyone bye, bye. gail Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.